just be out with us on MSC Seashore. We're doing three Caribbean cruises in three consecutive weeks. And this is our third cruise for this series. This is our first time on MSC Sailing MSC and it is quite different. In this video, we are going to be listing the pros and cons of this ship. And boy, there are a lot of them. And the reasons why we are not going to be sailing MSC ever again. So stick around to find out if MSC Seashore is right for you. Just, Just be, be out, out with us. MSC in Miami has the worst check-in process. We've been in line for almost an hour just to go through TSA and now there is even a bigger line to go actually check in. When booking MSC Seashore, it was advertised that we were eligible for a balcony upgrade. And normally all the offers that are offered are being included automatically into your booking. So I was under impression that while booking stateroom, we were going to get balcony. And on their website, it was not clear that we actually were booked for a stateroom. So when we checked in, uh, the concierge told us that we do have a stateroom right behind me there is guest services and we are, when we approached guest services they were really surprised and they said no we never do this type of promotion so i feel cheated i feel it is misadvertisement on msc's behalf as we got on board we noticed there are this type of cruise card activation points and we noticed a lot of people were standing in line to activate their cruise cards this is our first time sailing msc and we did not know what this is because normally as you check in or booking your cruise they ask you if you would want to use the card the same card that you are booking your cruise with or another card so this is new to us and when we ask guest services how this works we were not given a clear explanation on how this works as far as we understood we are able to use our cruise card without a credit card attached to it only to some point if you go over x amount of a limit that you spend your card gets blocked and you need to add your credit card here or you can also add cash if you decide not to add the credit cards throughout your sailing time when you try to disembark the ship and go home you will be stopped and you will have to go to guest services to take care of your bill so right away for MSC seashore stateroom pros a lot of mirrors there's this mirror number one and it is pretty large and mirror number two is full size look at that also the closet is perfect configuration on one side you have you can hang stuff and on the other side there are shelves with some drawers and you have more drawers over here as well and this entire room feels really bright and light and light i really like the design forgot to tell you one more thing i find their garbage cans very impractical so as you can see over here it says food paper plastic they do want you to recycle and that's okay but you have to lift this little lids in order to do so and this garbage can is tucked away under the table to save space so in order to throw anything away you have to literally go under the table try to figure out which compartment you have to put your stuff open this little lid and then dispose of your garbage this is my personal opinion let me know if this would annoy you where did you think i was 
I am on the cruise ship. This ship is gorgeous. It is brand new and we absolutely love how they have different themes in different parts of the ship. And this is La Rouge part where they have evening shows. But let us take you to other parts where the theme and design is absolutely incredible. To continue on the design and theme of this cruise, it is absolutely incredible. For example, as you can see, we are in the sports bar. Now this sports bar, let me walk you around, is really, really, really cool. The first time we walked in here, we were like, wow. So look at the decor, even the tables, like they have nets, sometimes they have basketballs inside of them. This one, for example, have tennis balls. There's a lot of milk. You have bicycles up in the top. Like look, for example, over here, we have like some bicycle spokes and wheels, tennis rackets, really cool. Along the way, you have the, uh, a ticker, which is really awesome. There's actually a ticker going up with real-time sports. So based on what's happening now, for example, at this time, Tiger Woods is actually playing. And as you can see, Tiger Woods fires back and it tells you the score, which is really cool. Let me walk you around. So as you can see, there's like gloves, punching bags, uh, lining the place, this table, actually has basketballs in it which is really cool there are several tvs and they're all showing uh different sports you can ask them to change it as well this one has baseballs in it really cool this one volleyballs and of course based on what's going on if it's a big sport uh happening in the moment like as i, as I, as I mentioned before tiger was just playing so they have that on the uh screen up there which is really awesome let me take you inside this room here So in here is really cool. They have a pinball machine. I actually forgot, this is actually shuffleboard over here. So you can play shuffleboard. Uh, there's pool, pool table, which is cool. Trophy room. So technically in this room, it's all mostly trophies, pool and shuffleboard. We've noticed several days on the ship now. Normally when you think of cruising, you think of, you know, having fun and meeting people, meeting a lot of new people actually. Well, on this cruise, it's a funny thing because after a while, we started feeling like we weren't really meeting a lot of people and we noticed a lot of people weren't really mingling as we have been on other cruises. And uh, what we really thought about was that this cruise is a European cruise. So therefore, a lot of the people on it, they actually come from all different countries, obviously speaking all different type of languages. And we thought maybe that's the point, maybe the language barrier, because a lot of times when you we speak to people in the elevator and they're like, oh, and they start speaking either Italian or whatever, and they might not even understand what you're saying much. They say hi and they're friendly, but you can't really strike a conversation because they speak other languages. So we think that's the reason why. MSC Seashore has three different pools. This area where we are right now is the adult infinity pool. They also have one more outdoor pool on the very top deck where they have music and games and one more pool that actually turns outdoor and indoor area and if it's raining they can put the cover back up and it will be indoors. The, there are also a lot of jacuzzis, much more than on any other ships that we have sailed on. The only con, there are actually two cons that um, we would notice about jacuzzis and the pools is number one, there is no protective shaded area. Right now we are in the shade is because of the ship relativity to the sun, but there is no actual shades that cover and protect you from the sun. The only shade is in the indoors area, which feels a little bit stuffy. But also there is one more thing is that there are no towels exchange even on this deck. So we are on deck eight. The only towel exchange is all the way up on deck 16 where the uh, main pool is. So if you want to exchange your towel, you have to go all the way up and it is a con for us. This is the main pool area to my left and to my right, right on the deck below, there are two jacuzzis. And as I mentioned before, there is no shaded area at all. And another con is there is no adult only jacuzzi. 
kids can go to any jacuzzis. This is MSC Seashore Spa area. As far as waiting area goes for the spa, it doesn't look too relaxing, but the rooms look brand new, so it must be good. But the pro is that MSC Seashore has state-of-the-art gym. It is really spacious, all the machines are brand new and beautiful. And there is lots of light because this area is wall-to-wall -wall open and you can see right through to the other side of the ship. So it allows a lot of light to pass through. When it comes to kids and activities, there is countless amount of things to do and really cool. So as you can see, I'm in this awesome arcade and it's really cool the way the glass is stained different colors and kids love that, of course. And there are video games and it's designed in like all these different pods that they can go into. There's air hockey, there's pinball machine and a lot of kids game. But the best part is actually coming up next. I'm going to show you that. Boom. And just like that, I am here in another part of the ship that is designed for kids. The theme is like jungle again, just like the last part we saw. Below me, there's like water activities going on. There's pool, there's big buckets being dumped on the children. To the left of me, we have the basketball court, but they're also playing dodgeball right now. It is so cool. It is like adventurous. It's really awesome for kids. Really great job on this one. I want to point out a few things about elevators here on MSC Seashore. First of all, there are eight elevators, but they are split into two sections. In this section, there are four elevators. So out of eight, you can only use four at the time. So you have limited chances of the elevator to come. Next, the elevators are pre-programmed. Right here, you can see two touch pads on each side. So it is a cool design. Right now, they are off. And as soon as you approach one, then the numbers light up, which is a really cool design. So once you select what floor you would like to go on, then it limits you to only one elevator out of four. So remember, out of eight elevators, you get first four, and then you can only get one. Opposed to on other ships, when you have a full section of eight elevators, and you choose one, whichever elevator comes first, then you can get on one. Here, sometimes the elevators do get a little bit longer to wait. Next, the numbers. Once you arrive to whichever floor you uh, want to arrive, the numbers are here only in the middle and here on the side of the elevator, which is a mirror and it's pretty hard to see. The elevators do tell you what floor you arrived on, but sometimes there are a lot of people talking and you can't really hear it. So sometimes it is difficult to know which floor you are on unless you walk out and then you see, oh, you might be on the wrong floor. Next, let's talk more about this touchpad. It is a cool technology. I love it. So let's select the floor. Which number would you select? 18, car C. So C, it pre-programs pre you to car C. The elevator number lights up and the signal you can hear the signal but there are a few cons once the elevator arrives there is no more signal so sometimes you would miss it see no signal next you can see there is a mirror in the elevator so when the door opens you can see the door of the other elevator and there is no signal so if you're not paying close attention you might miss your elevator biggest con that stood out to us above all the rest was the soliciting of specialty dining on the MSC seashore. Normally, you would expect soliciting when you go to ports of calls by locals trying to sell you tours and souvenirs. But on the MSC seashore, they're soliciting every single day of the week up to the last day of sailing. And the soliciting is done by crew. We've seen it time and time again. They've they approach us multiple times on multiple decks of the ship asking us if we want to buy 
a dinner package and when you tell them no it's okay they start you off with like one of the really higher expensive dinner package and when you say no then they bring it down to like the mid and you're like no I'm not really interested and they're like well how about the lowest one and you know they try to get you one way or the other and that became super annoying to us that we would see them coming a mile away and we would get up and leave because I know they would probably come up to us and ask us if we wanted to purchase a dinner package when you're dining at the buffet most likely you will need some beverages and refreshments there are only two beverage stations for the entire buffet one is right behind me and the other one all the way at the end of the buffet but it is closed for most of the time so all the people dining at the buffet have to come to this beverage station. As you see here, this beverage station is closed and the lunch is still going on. So again, if, we, if you grab your food in the front of the buffet and want to sit and dine at the end of the buffet, you have to walk all the way to the front of the buffet to get your beverage refreshment. And for most of the time, there is only one attendant. There is a hot beverages and cold beverages. And most of the time, only one attendant is bouncing between the two and serving you. So most of the time, there is a long line here to get your beverages. And another thing I noticed that when you ask for any type of juices or water, automatically they're serving it to you without ice. If you want your water or juices to be served with ice, you actually have to ask specifically juice with ice or water with ice. We notice uh, sailing on other cruise ships, there are actually servers uh, going with trays or carts and offering you refreshments of coffee, water or juices. But here there are servers only serving you alcoholic beverages or paid coffees now the next con is con for us maybe just an inconvenience for other people but on other cruise ships we notice that they leave utensils on the table fresh new wrapped utensils here the utensils are being kept next to your plate so you really need to remember to grab utensils otherwise once you get your food you sit down you realize you have no utensils then you have to walk around the ship and find those stations and they are a little bit hidden too so if we are a little bit on the side you don't really see this utensil station you really have to walk around and find where that utensil station is also you notice here a lot of um, windows are already blocked off or sometimes they are, they've been blocked off and yet they have some open stations with different food varieties all the way in the back so in order to find out what else they have you have to walk all the way around and also uh, as far as the design goes this is a really pretty display window as a design but yet it's a space that you again have to walk all the way around to get to the next station. For us, the layout of this buffet is a big con. Another con that we noticed that they do not clean tables as fast as on other cruise ships. Again, when the buffet area is full and you're walking around looking for seats, you see just empty plates sitting there for a while. And even when we're dining at our own table, when we're done with the plate, we put, specifically put it to the side to let them know that we are done with our dishes and it's still 10-15 minutes they do not pass by to clean the table and again this is only in comparison to other cruise ships that we had sailed on let's talk about the quality of the food here on this ship well it's definitely lacking that's for sure there's not a lot of choices and not only that the food that is available is majority of the time really cold we have spoke to many people on the ship who have pretty much said the same thing, even actually staff, we had overheard them talking about the quality of the food. Uh, like for example, bacon, whenever they put bacon in the pan, it seems like what they do is they take the entire pack of bacon, put it on the grill, because when they do put it in the plate for them to serve it in the dish, it's hard to take out 
bacon per slice. It's not separated. It's very clumped together. And sometimes you see people, their plates have like 10, 11, 12 pieces of bacon just clumped together. So they're not even separated. Also, what we notice, um, it takes a while for them to really replenish the food. So the food is placed in these uh, containers and it only seems like they replace it when there's only one piece left in there, just like maybe just like just fragments of pieces. Sometimes I have to wait and ask them, can you, you know, I would like a piece of fish. Can you, you know, replace it? Because whatever left in the pan is just sauce and maybe just two little pieces of fishes that people have already picked through. So they don't really replenish it fast enough. Several times also they had technical issues, which can happen at any time. But while we were on, while we were sailing, power went out, which means that all the beverages, coffee, juices, water, all that stuff that required pumping, they all went out. And that was in the middle of breakfast during a disembarkment on one of our, uh, one of our stops. So everyone was having breakfast and all of a sudden there was no coffee available, no water, no beverages. So that was kind of an inconvenience. It happened, I think several times, but I guess it is what it is. Now, during breakfast time, this is your area where you get your omelets. And this is the back of the buffet. And there are only two omelet stations and they're located right next to each other and only at the buffet. So in order for you to get omelets, you have to walk all the way to the back of the buffet and get your omelets. And there is always a long line because again, there are only two omelet stations. Another inconvenience or a con is there is no condiment stations throughout the ship. When we sailed on other ships, there were condiments right on your table, on every table, matter of fact, ketchup, salt, and things like that, the basics. But here on MSC Seashore, there are only few condiment station and they are located inside the food station. So if you don't know exactly where they're located you have to walk around the entire buffet looking for them and they're kind of hidden and you can see that there is a person operating the condiments as well and putting them in little cups so to us it is really convenient the way this buffet is set up is they have plexiglass blocking the food and they only have about a foot of space between the counter and the plexiglass for some food options it is self-serve but mind you it is only one foot where you can put your hand and scoop whatever you need to scoop and bring it back on your plate and it is really inconvenient to do that because the space is so limited so sometimes you have to really crunch over to get your food and as on top of that when you do get your food you have to take it out of the serving dish bring it all the way on the side and then to your plate in order not to get your food uh, smashed into that plexiglass it is very inconvenient and there is also inconsistencies on what food is being served to you by the staff or what food you can actually grab yourself for example there are some jam stations in the morning that you can actually press and get it yourself or there are some jam stations that are blocked off and they portion and ration them to you so it's not consistent to me and it's a little bit weird another thing that is different here on msc shore is the way they label the food all the labels are in different languages and sometimes it's hard to read because it is so small it is placed a little bit away from the food so for me personally it is difficult to read what kind of dish they are serving so let's talk about the pros now this place right behind me, the pizzeria, the pizza is so good. I compare it to New York style pizza. It is that good. The crust is majority of the time just nice, flaky, crispy. Um, they do only serve three types of pizza. They have a pizza which just has tomato sauce on it. Then there's usually a pepperoni pizza. And then there's one with uh, like some type of a white cheese. I don't know if it's just plain mozzarella cheese on top. And sometimes they do like slices of bacon on it. Those are the only three that you're gonna get. Not unless you specifically ask for maybe um, olives or uh, um, mushrooms or different style of the pizza. You can actually have it delivered to your room, the whole entire pie, they'll bake it for you right here and they'll send it to your room and that's up to 1 a.m. in the morning. So 
that was really cool. And I found myself eating mostly pizza for majority of the time on this cruise because I really didn't find much that I can eat and forget about it. Not even Irene, now because she, you know, she eats so light. Even fishes, sometimes she would have a piece of fish and the fish would be really fishy. So, you know, it wasn't really a good experience. The funny thing is the only two pros of dining we found is here is one of them, Venki chocolate shop and unfortunately it is paid experience but the quality of their chocolate is incredible and if you've been following me you know that i love chocolate here you can buy all different chocolate types and they go by weight uh, 100 grams is 9.95 and also they offer uh, different types of sorbets and gelatos and my favorite is 75 percent chocolate gelato i have never tasted chocolate gelato that is so rich and they also have even 82 percent chocolate gelato which is incredible but for me it does taste a little bit too bitter and they have the the this gelato stations in several places on the ship and they also offer experiences so they have this different designed signature dishes with their gelato and liquor this is heaven for me and i highly recommend for you to try it when you sail msc seashore let's talk internet so for those of you who need to check your emails maybe keep up with work away while you're on your vacation this is a totally different experience than we ever experienced on any cruise line most cruise lines that we've been on when you purchase an internet package some of them have different levels some just have just one package but the ones with different level allow you to kind of basically check emails and do text messages then their premium level would be streaming so if you want to watch netflix or youtube when coming on the msc seashore we got the premium package but here is the actual kicker in all this normally on other cruise ships we've been on when you purchase a package you can actually have the internet on your phone, log out on your phone, and then perhaps maybe put the internet on your laptop and vice versa. On this cruise ship, once you initiate the package on a particular device, whether it's on your iPhone or on your tablet or on a laptop, the internet cannot be removed from that device. You can log out and log back in, but you cannot log out and put the, the internet on another device. Irina and I, when we're traveling on a cruise ship, sometimes I have control of the internet. I log out, she logs in on her device. We were not able to do that. And that was very surprising to us that you couldn't do that. When we tried to address the uh, situation down here at the internet station, they were like, yes, there is no way. Once you put the internet on one particular device, whether it's a laptop, cell phone, or tablet, it will stay on that device for the duration of the cruise. You cannot switch devices. We understand that sometimes if you want another package so two people can have internet, that's another different package you have to buy into. Not in this case. It's one package, one device. You cannot turn it off and turn it on on another device. And that was really, really difficult for us to swallow because we're like, that doesn't make any type of sense, especially since that has never happened to us on any other cruise line before. So that was really weird. So in short, if you have three devices, say a laptop, an iPad, and, and a phone, you have to buy three different packages if you want the internet to be on your laptop, on your, on your tablet, or on your phone doesn't make much sense does it let us know in the uh, comments below have you been in a situation where you're able to switch a device or have you been in a cruise ship where they do not allow you such as this one now let's talk about shopping I know a lot of you guys when you come on vacation you want to spend that money right you want to go shopping you want to buy something to remind you of your cruise well here on the MSC seashore there is a lot of shopping but there are some pros and cons depending on your personal preference for example the stores here, as you can see, they're very high-end stores and they sell name brand items. And it goes from jewelry to clothing to perfume, you name it, it's high-end. Again, depends on your personal preference, high-end stores, all here for your shopping needs. Let's get into the entertainment portion here 
of the MSC Seashore. We're here at the Madison Theater, and a pro of this theater is that they have two shows every single day, so you can catch one, an earlier one or a later one, and also there is a different show every single day of the week. That is it for the pros. Now let's get into some cons. Well, first of all, just keep in mind that these pros and cons are based on our personal experiences. Yours may be different. Even if you do choose to come on this particular cruise, it may be different based on a different time. Based on the time we were here, this is how we experienced it and this is what we saw and also based on other cruises that we have been on just recently. As you guys know, if you've been following us, we went on three different cruises in three different weeks, different cruise lines and everything else. So the con here is that we found the entertainment their singing. So their singing was not really great. A lot of them, I don't know because maybe this is a European ship, but a lot of them had, you know, strong accents because a lot of the performers are from different parts of the world, but they, we found their accents to be very strong. Even when they did cover songs of very popular songs, Michael Jackson. Celine Dion, the accents were just so strong that it was almost hard to understand what they were saying or what they were singing. So we found that to be kind of really off. Also, we noticed uh, one of the singers had kind of like this opera uh, singing style going and they would mix opera with regular pop music and then other singers will be singing in regular tones and she would be singing with opera so it would it's kind of like an infusion of both it just felt really quirky and we didn't really understand where it was coming from the talent that they had on stage some of them more acrobatic they seemed to be almost like street performers it didn't seem like they had stage presence you know when you're on stage you have that that poise and you're very you know artistic they didn't seem like that they were kind of looking at each other from the corner of their eyes to make sure they were aligned different things like that we noticed we pick up on, the, on all the small details but it was definitely very noticeable a couple of them stumbled and actually me personally when i saw them on stage doing the acrobat i was really holding my breath because i'm like i hope that they don't slip and fall and on occasion there were a couple blunders here and there but obviously we're all human and we make mistakes but it didn't seem it didn't come across as if they were professionals now let's talk about the stage design and the, the costumes uh, in certain songs you would think the costume would change and it's not so they would be in a cowboy outfit and they were singing a, a different song that had nothing to do with country and western or or cowboy and it just seems like the costume that they were wearing didn't really fit the scene or the songs or the actual theme of what they were actually performing so it felt a little bit off and it felt like there was actually a disconnect there the choreography it also felt very mediocre it kind of was it felt like one two steps there were a few pirouettes and again we're comparing this to other cruise ships that we have just recently seen and we also been sailing for a very long period of time and we've noticed like really good top-notch shows and this one definitely fell short of that now even though i mentioned before every day the show changes what we notice is that the, the structure actually stayed the same so they would be singing then there would be an acrobat then there would be singing then there would be dancing so the structure always remained the same completely throughout the whole week definitely disappointed in the entertainment department now as far as the protocol goes for covid you notice all these white squares that you're seeing behind us these are all signs that are saying you can't sit there so it's social distancing but as you can see look how many seats in the theater is actually blocked off there are times that we saw people came with families of four or five or more they would just sit in the seat regardless or just kind of lift the paper off the seat so we saw that happening it was very confusing on our first day or two coming into the theater there was someone to check us with a clicker to make sure they know how many people are coming in the theater they told us to wear a mask so we had to go and get our mask then after that no one ever mentioned anything about a mask if you look at the theater while shows are going on it's like 70 percent of the people are not wearing masks some are wearing masks so again it's just very back and forth and it's not mandated but at times if you approach the right or the wrong person depending on how you look at it they'll tell you can you please put a mask on 
Here, what we noticed on MSC Seashore, it is very clean. You see the crew sanitizing and cleaning everything constantly. There are social distancing markers placed in most places, and there are lots of sanitizing stations that are clearly marked. One thing that we were actually surprised of was the mask mandates. This is our third cruise in three consecutive weeks. So we're doing three Caribbean cruises in three weeks. And on two previous cruises that we just sailed on, Carnival Freedom and NCL Joy, we did not have to wear masks on board at all. But as soon as we boarded, MSC Seashore that told us masks were mandatory inside. So inside the restaurants, if you're walking inside the ship, you're, you have to wear masks. But the only two places that are actually enforcing masks are in front of the theater if you want to go to watch a show and for guest services and if you approach not wearing a mask they will actually provide a mask for you so what we notice some passengers are actually do wear masks indoors and some don't it is almost time to leave and what's cool about MSC app is that they send you notification reminders. I just got a notification saying all aboard today 1.30 p.m. And in the morning I also received a notification from the app saying what time we disembark. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sticking around with us for this long. Overall, MSC Seashore is a brand new and beautiful, beautiful ship. ship. There are lots of different themed areas and lots of opportunities to take pictures. The stops were great. Our personal reasons why we don't want to sail MSC again is number one, the food. I think it's actually Carnival Freedom had better food than MSC Seashore. And if you Seashore. saw our video on that, you would know the food was pretty bad. <laughs> And the second reason is Wi-Fi being locked to only one device. I find it ridiculous that if you are not using it on your iPhone and you want to check your emails on your laptop, you have to buy another package. Yes, and as content creators, that's a deal breaker for us because we want to be able to switch devices based on what it is, the type of work that we're doing. So these are our personal reasons why MSC is not the cruise ship line for us. If you find any other pros and cons of MSC Seashore, be sure to drop a comment below. And if anybody cares, there is no 24-hour dining and no library on the ship. Just with that being said, just, just be, be out, out with us. us.